Hello, everybody. Today is day 328, and we're continuing our reading through the book of Acts, or the Acts of the Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 4 through 6. Now, the apostles are getting into all kinds of trouble, uh, and it's not a kind of trouble that is a result of defiance or their disobedience, but rather it is trouble that comes as they begin to join forces with God, and they cause quite the disturbance, and it doesn't appear that they care. They don't seem to be impacted by it. They cause a disturbance primarily because they are now preaching Jesus. And this is what the religious leaders thought that they could snuff out when they crucified Christ. And now it comes back in full force because these men now have the resurrected Christ living on the inside of them. They arrested these uh, apostles, and yet even in spite of them trying to silence them, the Bible tells us that 5,000 uh, get saved. <clears throat> and here we go again, the religious leaders attempt to shut it down. They attempt to stop it. They arrest Peter and the others, and they are Holy Ghost filled. And, uh, uh, and so now they're speaking uh, as Jesus predicted, think of a Peter who previously this cowardly man hiding behind uh, uh, locked doors, fearing for his life, now filled with the Spirit of God, goes out there and uh, without even uh, any, you know, advanced warning, he stands before the religious leaders and he begins preaching to them. Um, remember Jesus had said to them, that they would be brought before rulers and leaders and that they were not to think ahead of time what they were going to say, but that the Holy Spirit would give them the words in the hour that they needed it. And so Peter begins proclaiming it. I mean, he says things to these leaders. They're, you know, you crucified this Christ whom God had appointed. Uh, you, uh, they, uh, there's no other name whereby men can be saved. And this must have just simply cut them to the heart. But, but you can tell that Peter has this holy boldness that God has placed upon him, and he is just under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Amazing, undeniable facts uh, that the critics witness. These religious leaders saw this as Peter is speaking, as they witness the uh, response of these, uh, these leaders. And it's, look what the Bible says. They saw their boldness. They realized that these were unschooled and untrained men, it was unusual. They, they marveled, the Bible says, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. What a great compliment that you and I would be, that people would realize that uh, we carry the fragrance of Christ. And they could say nothing against them. Uh, plus, there is that crippled beggar healed standing in their midst, and they just simply silenced them, and they couldn't do anything about it. Now, they severely threatened them and uh, warned them, said, don't speak about this man, this name. That's funny how they say, don't speak that name anymore. Uh, they didn't say Jesus, just don't speak about that name anymore, as if they couldn't even speak the name. And yet, um, the apostles leave from there, and they're rejoicing. They're rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer. Uh, they prayed as they gathered together, and guess what they prayed for? They didn't pray against their critics or the persecution is what maybe we would say, God, stop it and, you know, bind them and break them and curse them. And, but, but rather, they didn't pray uh, for God to shut the persecution down. No, they uh, asked that uh, they would look upon their threats and, and give them more boldness. That's what they said. Give us more boldness and uh, grant that uh, that we can have, uh, you know, the authority and the power to, to get out there and, and do it more. And it's remarkable because, again, they're not concerned about their own selves. They're concerned about the proclamation of the gospel. And the Bible says that when they had prayed, the place where they had, were assembled was shaken. And notice something, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. The same ones that experienced this filling in Acts 2 are once again here in this fourth chapter being filled again. So we understand that there's not one filling of the Spirit, but there is a need to be continually filled. Even as Paul said, don't be drunk with wine that, in which is dissipation or drunkenness, but be filled or continually filled with the Holy Spirit. Look at the characteristics of this young church. They were of one heart and one mind, of one accord. They recognize um, that they own nothing. They, they, uh, they were simply stewards of the resources God had entrusted to them. Uh, they had everything in common with each other. They, the, they, the, there was great power of, uh, that had been given to them as witnesses 
Um, there was a spirit of generosity that all that they had, they shared with anyone else that had need. Uh, there was great fear that came upon those in that uh, community because uh, the Bible says none dared to join them. So they'd heard about the moving of God and certain people like Ananias and Sapphira had dropped dead because of lying and, you know, corruption. And so they didn't want to play around with this. They knew that God was in their midst and that uh, they it was a real deal. And the people esteemed them because they were people, of, these leaders of character. And, uh, as, and as a result, the Bible tells us that multitudes were saved and healed and marvelous works uh, were done in and through them by the hand of God. Look at the qualifications of the leaders selected by the apostles. Um, you know, there was a dispute. Whenever there's a move of God, you can be sure there's going to be discord. There's going to be things that happen that's going to try to break up what God's doing. But I want you to see that when they went to select uh, to take care of the situation, they looked for people who had a good reputation. They looked for people who were full of the Holy Spirit. They were full of faith. They were full of wisdom. And, uh, and, and this thing, this was just for serving tables. This wasn't for going out and preaching stuff. This was to take care of distribution of food to the well uh, to the widows and and so when they selected people who would oversee that ministry the uh, high calling qualification is amazing to me because we have a tendency to be very flippant about who we place in places of service look why the the apostles uh directed this uh response to the widows because he said it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. So they assigned people who had gifts and abilities and talents that would utilize their gifts of service. So they, they organized the entire body of Christ to be actively engaged uh, based upon their own strengths and abilities. The leaders, though, as a result, were able to devote themselves, continue to two of their primary uh, objectives. Did you, did you catch that? It says they devoted themselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. This became the most important thing that the key leaders of a church or any church can do is that they devote themselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. That's pretty important that we find this in the early church and I think it demonstrates that it should be a priority in our church today. What were the results as, as because of what they organized here? The Bible says that the word of God spread that the disciples increased, so evangelism was bringing great fruit. Uh, the needs of those were met, that is, in, there was no one that lacked anything. And even the priests were coming to faith in Jesus Christ. Now that's quite the power. God's work done in God's way produces uh, God's results. And when we look to God, uh, it will never lack God's resources. That's just the power of the Holy Spirit. The basis, bottom line of all of this, all that they were enabled with was the advancement of Jesus Christ, the message of Jesus Christ, and that people would come to know Christ as Lord and Savior.